to. All right, we are live. Thank you everybody for joining us tonight for Unmade Student Link. Um, I have the utmost respect for Joe Madigan, who is with us this evening as one of our speakers. Um, he is the Senior Associate Director of Admissions at Florida Southern College. And I do have to say, Joe, I am slightly biased. I do love your campus. I love what you guys stand for. Um, we've had great conversations about admissions and finding yep. your fit. And you're such a you're so passionate about making sure that students and parents really find the program that works for them. So I'm really excited that you're here just to kind of share your insights on, mm -hmm. you know, really kind of helping students find their college fit because it's a big question mark for a lot of these families. Before we went live, we were talking about the big schools and how, you know, some kids are just a linear thinking pathway in here. Maybe there's some other things we need to think about um, when finding the perfect school. So um, I'm going to turn it over to you to kind of introduce yourself a little bit further, but so glad. And just um, the people that are here, just make sure you can. There's a chat button for you guys. I'm going to actually just say hi. Hi, everyone. You should be able to see that. And let's just mark where we are from. Where are you from? You can just let us know so we can see you guys in here. All right, go ahead, Joe. Awesome. Thanks so much, Amanda. Always a pleasure, and I'm excited to get a chance to chat tonight. Uh, just to introduce myself, Kate. I'm Joe Madigan. I'm our Senior Associate Director of Admissions here at Florida Southern College. Uh, this is actually going to be my 13th year working with students in the undergraduate admissions process this year. This will be my sixth year here at Florida Southern. have always had the chance since I've been here uh, to work with our students from Southwest Florida, so Bradenton, Sarasota, Fort Myers, Naples area, the greater Southwest Florida area. Um, I've also had the pleasure of getting the opportunity to work with students in financial aid for all six years that I've been here as the main point of contact and transferring college credit, which I know is becoming ever more popular from dual enrollment to AP to IB to ACE credits that's there. So really providing the opportunity for a family to have me as a one-stop shop. Uh, we're really unique in that process, make the admissions process, financial aid process very individualized. Uh, prior to my time here at Florida Southern, I worked for the big school. I worked at the University of Florida for about two and a half years. And then prior to that, I'm originally from upstate New York, from Buffalo, go Bills, go Sabres. Uh, up in upstate New York and uh, worked for a couple of prestigious private schools up there, including my alma mater up north, where I got my undergraduate degree from. So I'm uh, excited to get a chance to chat tonight and share a little bit more information about finding the right college fit. Um, I think what's interesting is, especially at this time of the year, if it's a junior that's starting that college search or that senior that's trying to narrow down what types of schools are going to work for them or what the best options are for them, it really comes down to fit. And I think college search is really kind of a general term, but finding the right college fit is more indicative of what students are trying to find and find that actual school that's going to work for them, both for academics as well as overall. And that's kind of what I hope to accomplish tonight is share a little bit about what it doesn't mean to find the right college fit, what kind of goes into that, some of the categories of that specifically. So and I, I title my presentation, Choosing the Right School for You. I truly believe that there's a right fit for every single student in the college search process, um, whether it be big school, small school. I think those are terms that we've heard for years upon years upon years. Um, I almost like to kind of put it as like the three little pigs or uh, you, you kind of think about the, the options that are out there overall for a student. You could have one that's just right. You could have one that's kind of too big, too small that's there, and it's about finding that right fit overall. Um, I also think when choosing the right school for you, it's more than just one singular factor oftentimes that students and families are considering. And that's important too. Um, and that's part of what I wanted to do and what I share when I talk with families and go through the admissions and the college search process, whether it be visiting on our campus or individually meeting with students, I try to help out in developing those specific factors that are important to the student so that they can make that right choice, ultimately, when they're looking in their college search. And getting started with that, I put together just kind of a small list of not only what makes a college, um, specifically the things about them, 
But I also think that these are great starting points to take a look at for a student going throughout their college search. And these are things to really start thinking about, whether it be starting as early as a freshman and sophomore in high school and thinking about what type of size of a school is going to work while they're in college or the types of things that they might be interested in beyond just academics, such as athletics, or maybe they want to go in-state versus out-of-state that's their location, how far away from home or how close to home that they want to be there. So I know family has some influence on that as well. If you're able to go out of state or in state, want to stay close to your family. Cost is becoming a huge driving factor more than ever. Um, Florida Southern College, just share a little bit about us. We are a private school here in the state of Florida. We're aware that sometimes that is a scary word uh, to some families that's there, but I'll share a little bit about when I say cost, one of the first things that I say, especially to a Florida family, we accept Bright Futures, we accept Florida prepaid, we accept the state-based aid programs that's there. And that comes with a shock to some families too, that yes, we're private, but we accept some of those types of things. So we try and help families understand a little bit about not only what is the cost of the school, but what is the actual amount that you're paying for your college education comparative to what you see as a sticker price sometimes. And that's where you can have those conversations in schools. Um, some other things I always like to mention when you think about when you're looking at schools and what might be the right fit and some factors to consider, ones that really stick out to me, um, what types of amenities are you looking for on a campus? Is wellness important to you? Is involvement important to you? Do you want to continue in the same clubs that you've been involved in in high school? So those are factors that certainly can play into the college search process. I haven't mentioned academics as much yet, and I'll go throughout the presentation kind of mentioning some of that. But one that comes up a lot is postgraduate support and success and then the opportunities for graduate school that's there. Uh, one thing I'm going to emphasize tonight is that you don't necessarily have to go to a school for your bachelor's degree, your first four-year degree, to actually go to the school that has that graduate school program at the same school. And you could certainly go off to one school and then go to the different school for your graduate school program. A lot of advisors will encourage you to do that in colleges and universities, too. So it gives you a little bit more diversity on your resume when you're applying for jobs, especially for medical schools and especially for professional programs. So those are certain opportunities that are there to consider. Um, other things I always like to mention when thinking about looking at a school, not only starting with cost and academics and some of the things that you would traditionally think about, but just the actual admissions process. What is that process in each of the schools that you're really interested in? Once you start building that list of, I'm in, these are my big interests and my big factors that I'm considering, how do you actually get into those schools? Uh, and that starts specifically with what is their application process? How do you apply? Do they have specific requirements? Um, are they test optional? Do they require test scores? Are they holistic in the review process? Are they just looking at GPA and test scores? What is their process like? Because every single school is completely different and what they're looking for in the admissions process. I know for us here at Florida Southern College, we're extremely holistic in the admissions process. We look at everything, GPA, test scores, letters of recommendation, an essay, resume, involvement. We are looking for the best fit for our campus. So I often talk about how to find your best fit, but we're also looking for the right fit too as a selective institution. Comparative to say a USF here in the state of Florida, they are really just looking at GPA and test scores. They have such volume in the applicant pool that's there. They're really just looking at, do you have the GPA, do you have the test scores that they're looking for that's there? So just to give an example of one other school, there's many schools that have that different process. And then a couple of things I'd like to mention as far as when you think about that actual selection process of your factors, I break it up into three different categories. You have a before, you're actually going through the process. So how do you get in? What does that application process look like? That's the before you actually get to college. Then you have while you're in college, you have things like housing, food. Let's be real. That's a real thing. You want to actually enjoy the food in the next four years on a campus where you're going to be. Um, what are the opportunities for internships, study abroad? What's the actual experience like on that campus? 
And then you think with the end in mind and the after, what are students doing at that college after graduation? Are they actually getting jobs? We call those outcomes, meaning that students get into grad school, they get jobs after graduation in the academic areas you're interested in. Is there support to get you there, whether it be a career center or tutoring, or do they set you up with internships? Those are all things that I always like to kind of put into categories out of what makes a college, is the before, the during, that a real experience, and then the after, and all things to consider and all part of that college search process too. Yeah, and I think it's really important, Joe, is that so many families and students don't realize that they really can have an active role in that yes. process. So when they're looking at colleges, it's always before, oh, you know, I want the college to accept me, but yep. you really need to accept the college at the mm -hmm. same time. And so really going in and um, kind of owning that process and asking those questions is really key. Because not every school, even if they're a big school, can meet all of those needs. Absolutely. And we like to say it's a co-binding decision a lot of times yeah. in choosing a college, uh, the school choosing the student, and then also the parent and the student choosing the college. Because we really believe that the parent is much of this college search process as the student is. Um, and I think we're, we recognize that as college admissions counselors, especially for here at Florida Southern or other small schools here in the state of Florida, even smaller public schools like a UNF or New College of Florida, FIU, FAU, they're really working with both the student and the parent in the college search process. So again, it's a great co-binding decision and that's a great point. Um, one thing that is a good conversation point to have is what does the actual right fit look like? And I start with size. That's there. So um, I think when you start thinking about fit, one of the first things that we always have questions about here is what's your class size? What's your student to faculty ratio? These are things that you probably are seeing in brochures and on websites that get publicized that's there. And when you're looking at schools, it's really not just the averages. I think that's important. You have to break it down into segments. What does it look like in your first year, your second year, your third year, your fourth year? Because a larger school may say their average class size is 25 to 30 students, but you could have a large lecture hall potentially, or maybe an online class that you're taking in your first year. Um, what are the resources that are available to a student inside the classroom? It's not always about just the actual class size, Who's really teaching that class? Is it a teaching assistant? Is it a student teaching the class? What's being taught? How is that being taught? Is it a full-time faculty member? Is it an adjunct faculty member that's actually teaching that class with somebody with experience that you can kind of really delve into and work with together? And I think about that in faculty support, but also when I see resource availability, do they have office hours? Can you ask questions in the classroom? What is that format like inside the classroom? Um, here at Florida Southern, one of the things we're known for is engaged learning. We really kind of apply what you actually learn inside the classroom itself. They do case studies, they do research. And it's not something we just say, it actually is something that happens every single day on campus. I mean, are there days where a student is certainly gonna have information that's given to them and then they can do something with it? Sure, I think any learning environment is gonna have that but more of what you see in a smaller school setting, whether it be public or private, is you're gonna have some of that interdisciplinary collaboration that takes place. Students working together, doing project-based learning. And I think that's important. Um, and when you think about big schools as well, sometimes you think about, well, they're bigger, so they must have more opportunities for involvement. That's there too. And sometimes that's the case. Certainly you're gonna have a wider range of opportunities at say an FSU or a UF, or if you go outside the state of Florida, Arizona State is one of the biggest schools in the country, Ohio State has tons of organizations that are really diverse in their opportunities, but that doesn't mean you can't have that experience at a smaller type school too. Uh, while we only have say 100 clubs, organizations and activities, they are pretty diverse in what you're gonna have from Greek life. You could have everything from religiously affiliated opportunities and different campuses too. So with smaller schools, I always like to say, you might have more opportunities for leadership positions because not as many students are fighting for those. If you're looking for big, huge school opportunities that have that big breadth, maybe a bigger school is a better fit for a student that's looking at that. 
Um, something also to consider is if you are more comfortable or come from a smaller size secondary school or high school, how's that gonna look for you when you go to college or university? And just as simple as getting around the campus that's there and figuring out transportation. Maybe you're excited about the opportunity that I wanna go to as big a school as possible. I wanna ride the buses around the campus for transportation and that excites a student. Maybe it's, I've gone to a big school, a big, huge high school, public high school, and I'm looking to be, have, be, a, be a little bit more of, say, the big fish in the small pond. So it's a smaller campus to get around. It gets to know everyone. People are going to get to know me, too. Some things to think about when you're looking at that. And then the other piece of this is social support that's on the campuses, too, when you think about size. A larger campus, and I mean physically larger campus, sometimes isn't able to do as much as a smaller school can do as far as its social support that's there. Maybe it's services such as you have a counseling center on campus. You might have to wait a little bit longer to get into a counseling center on campus comparative to a smaller school because of volume of students that's there. And just some simple things to think about when you kind of dive in to when you're looking at the college search, it's not about just big and small. I always think about size as both academics, social life, the size of the physical campus and the physical layout. How long does it take you to walk from one side of that campus to the other? Uh, are you actually going to interact with in individuals as part of that walk on campus? Um, I, I, one example I love to give here is it probably should, and keyword should, take me somewhere between eight and 12 minutes to go across our campus here. I can't do that during the academic year because usually I'm stopped and I'm talking to somebody as I go along the campus here. That's something that I thrive in as far as an environment. That's why I love being here. I went to a smaller school myself. And while I, I saw the big school opportunities and the pride that's in the big school that's there, I felt that this was a great fit for me. And that's what it's about. Finding the right size and what's going to work for you as a student. And I will laugh because the last time I visited, you know, in the fall time, remember I was walking through and here one of my students was just sitting in one of the common areas near the little yep. Starbucks area and just happened to see her. Like she didn't even know I was on campus. And, you know, and I, I thought that was pretty cool because, you know, yep. they were more centrally located where the students hung out. Absolutely. Uh, all things to consider when you look at size is, you know, do you want to be able to go and see a lot of people that you know on campus mm -hmm. right off the bat? Or do you want to kind of be the person that's, I just want to go to my classes. I really want to kind of do my own thing, have my own little group and maybe a bigger school. So, and it's unique to every situation. Kind of give some of these examples, but every situation is going to be unique and you can make a big school as far as big numbers. Perfect example of this would be like UCF. Maybe that you're in a program that's much smaller that's there, or you're in a specific group of students that's much smaller. Say you're a communication science and disorders major with a hope to go into speech language pathology at UCF, much smaller group of students comparative to say biology where everybody's trying to go to med school uh, out of that major. So you're gonna have different experiences when you look at the academics, the social life and the campus navigation when I think about that. Another thing that I, I certainly like to consider a lot of times, speaking of academics, is the separation I already talked about of undergraduate versus graduate programs. Schools are going to offer undergraduate programs where you can earn a bachelor's degree. Schools will offer graduate programs. And a lot of students, I think, a lot oftentimes are looking at schools, where can I stay? And we certainly develop programs for that as well. I was telling Amanda before we started our presentation here tonight, uh, we have a new doctorate in physical therapy program here at Florida Southern. And we would love for our students in our exercise science major to feed in and filter into that program. We're setting up tracking to do that with a pre-physical therapy professional track. But we know that students from other campuses are likely to apply to that program as well. We want to have that. Most colleges and universities are looking for diversity in their graduate school programs. Uh, I can say from personal example at the University of Florida, only about 40% of the students that would go say into the veterinary medicine program there, when I was there previously, this is going back a few years now, but when I was there, they would be for UF students about 40%. That means 60% of the students were not UF students going in their graduate school in veterinary medicine because they're looking for the best to fill those graduate school programs. We're doing the same here, whether it be 
a doctorate nurse practitioner program, doctorate in education. Uh, I know at other schools, we hear this as well. We have articulation agreements with schools like Lake Erie College of Osteopathic Medicine, a popular one for a lot of smaller schools like Florida Southern or Southeastern University. Uh, I know several other small schools, part of the private schools in the state of Florida have those types of partnerships. So they have a pathway for a student to go off to a graduate school, even if it's not on their own same campus. Um, the other thing I always like to mention, college is designed to be an experience where you can grow as an individual and grow not only just in the specific major that you're taking, but also in kind of exploring some new things academically. We know more and more students are coming in with college credit. We're very aware of that, uh, whether it be earning their associate's degree by the time that they graduate from high school or coming with their IB diploma or ACE diploma now. Um, we accept up to 93 transferable college credits from an incoming first year student. Notice I was careful not to say freshman, I was careful to say first year student on our campus, because really at that point they're a senior by credits, but maybe they're looking for more out of their experience. And oftentimes you still have to complete those specific major based requirements. So majors and minors, and I really put emphasis on minors, giving you the opportunity to explore some new things. Um, maybe you want to double major. Working with academic advisors is critical. If you're coming in with college credits, figuring out what that school is going to accept for those college credits, and then also what are they actually offering? This is most commonly probably the first starting point for most students in their college search. Does this school have the major that I'm most interested in? And that's really the great starting point to have. But also kind of consider, are there other areas that you might be interested in? Because sometimes students change their major when they go to college. Um, that happens. If they have multiple options for you, I can share personally, when I was looking at schools, I was looking at schools that had education, theater, psychology. I had multiple interests. Hospitality was another one. I was kind of like all over the place in my college search. I just wanted to make sure it had, that school had some of those options. And then I kind of landed on what I wanted to do after my first semester. And that's okay. I think that's very common for a lot of students. Maybe you have an idea, I'm really interested in going to med school or going off for dental school, but I don't know if I like biology or chemistry or biochemistry. That's okay. You can figure out those majors as you go along, as long as the school has that offering that's there. I spoke a little bit about engaged learning and that, what that means is kind of a learning by applying in the classroom and actually doing something with what you're learning. There's some opportunities for independent learning, and this includes being in class versus online. This is a great question to start asking admissions representatives at the colleges and universities that you're looking at. In your first year on a campus, how much time are you spending in the classroom? How many of the classes are gonna be taught by full-time faculty? How many of the classes are gonna be online? These are real conversations to have because are you an, a, an online learner? Do you like taking online classes? It's something you enjoy and you're interested in. Are you more of a person that has to be in that classroom to actually get things out of that class? Um, there's all different types of learners that are out there and tons of different schools that have all those different opportunities for you. And the other piece of this that I started with tonight is talking about the admissions application process. There are different entry terms uh, for actually applying to schools that you can apply for. Some schools give you the option to apply for summer, some give you just fall, some give you summer and fall and spring and different entry options. Uh, being at the University of Florida previously, they have their PACE online option, they have the Innovation Academy, they have a summer start option, they have a fall start option. You can put all these options on your application that's there and you reviewed for any of them. But questions to ask as you're going throughout your college search of what are those programs like? Start asking that now if they have specific entry programs or entry terms that you need to be aware of, especially for your specific majors that you might be interested in. Um, I was talking with Amanda before we started the conversation here about nursing. Uh, we actually start our students in our nursing program and our nursing courses their first semester at Florida Southern. They're starting clinical hours in their sophomore year, so about a year ahead of when they would traditionally do so. So that's very unique to us here. Um, aviation is a very unique program at Lynn University as a small school that's down in Boca Raton, Florida. They have specific requirements for that program, something different that's there. So there's all kinds of different things to look at academically beyond what is my major, kind of dive a little bit deeper, some suggestions for that. 
The next thing that I wanted to cover in speaking about academics is not just inside the classroom, but outside the classroom. This is also becoming more and more common for families to ask about in their college search, what support services are available to my students? That's there. My son or daughter has been used to going to a faculty member asking questions. Do they have office hours? Tutoring. How does that look on the college campus? Do you have a writing center? Uh, is it a peer assisted tutoring program? How is the actual classroom itself set up? Is it a lecture hall where seating is there and you're staring at a screen? Is it more of like a circular format and a discussion format? Just the physical setup of the classroom itself. Career support. Do you have a career center on the campus that's gonna help you build your resume, help you get those interviewing skills that you need to get a job or get into graduate school? And then internships. Are they available? Internships is what I like to use, we used to call on the job training. Uh, OJT is what I used to call it. And that's really real world applicable experiences. Are those available to undergraduate students? Students earning their first degree, their bachelor's degree. Uh, if you go to a college campus and you visit their campus and you're seeing facilities and hearing stories about opportunities for students and in internships, ask, was that a student earning their bachelor's degree or a graduate student that's using that resource that's there? Um, even on a smaller campus, I've seen that where they say, well, these are the stories we've had. It's our graduate students that do that here compared to our undergraduates. Here at Florida Southern, we don't have a huge wide array of master's and doctoral programs, so all of our resources are put towards our students earning their bachelor's degrees. That's our focus and who we are as a school, whereas a school like a UF or a USF, or give you an example outside the state of Florida, like a Duke University, they have a huge amount of resources that are put towards their graduate students that are on the campus there because they know those are the students that are gonna become doctors and lawyers and go out and do those change, be the change makers out there. So they're putting some of those best resources towards those students. So something to consider as you go on through the academic process and choosing a school, using those academic resources is another factor to consider. Next thing that I wanted to share tonight is about the social life. You want to have fun while you're in college that's there. So yes, you're going to spend time in a classroom. Yes, you're going to engage and work with other students on projects and case studies and research and new internships. But you want to have a good, well-rounded experience as well. And I think this is one of the things that you can take a look at really as the student specifically and say, what am I looking for out of my college experience? What do I want to be involved in? If I was in Student Government Association while I was in high school, can I continue that in college? Um, if I really want the opportunity to work on campus while I'm in college, do you have a work study program? Are there part-time jobs available? What does the actual diversity of the campus look like? Um, I, oftentimes when I hear the word diversity, I like to clarify that information because that's different for every person here and in every person in their college church. Diversity to me is diversity where students are coming from. We have about half of our students coming from outside the state of Florida, half from inside the state of Florida. That's very different than a lot of our state schools here in the state of Florida. We have mostly Florida students that they're going to be at the state schools here. Maybe you're more so looking at diversity based on race or ethnicity or sexual orientation or religious affiliation. Those are all diverse elements to the campus to take a look at. So when you say that word, and we hear this on college tours, and we talk to the college church, clarify, what type of diversity are you looking for? What are you most passionate about? What's most important to you? I mean, I can always share that we're a welcoming community to all students of all backgrounds, but what's most important to you as a student? And colleges will ask that too, you can see that. Another thing is, what is it like around the campus itself? Uh, what is the town like? Is it a college town? Are the things that you're looking for in the local area, as we have a lot of students from outside the state of Florida here at Florida Southern, that makes us a diverse campus. And one of the biggest draws in any of our material that they see, we're 35 minutes from Walt Disney World. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's a huge draw for a lot of families from outside the state of Florida. Even if you know nothing else in the state of Florida, you know Disney is here and that's close for our students to go out and do that. But our local students, whether it be here in Lakeland, Orlando, Tampa, coming from Southwest Florida, what is there to do here for a student? Do you have dining options? What do students do on the weekend? Is it a suitcase campus? We are by no means a suitcase campus. Our students don't go home, pack up, go home for the weekend and come back on Monday morning for class. 
That's not who we are as a school. We are students that are very involved, but there are schools like that that are very heavy in the number of commuter students that are on their college campus. Uh, meaning that students will come in, drive in, park, take their classes, and then maybe leave that's there. So being aware of what the actual campus life is like, and I always love to use the word culture. The culture of the campus is what the students and what they're involved in the pulse of the students. What is residential life like? How many of the students live on campus? What percentage live on campus? How involved are the students? Um, small things like that, that are very big overall when you look at what it's going to be actually like for you in the college search. Here at Florida Southern, we have a ton of things to be involved in, even as a student body, about 2,500 undergraduate students. We have Greek life, 14 Greek organizations. We have religious affiliated club organizations activities. We have students that are involved in civil engagement as well, community service. So if you're passionate about those things, Mark those on your list as things that you're looking at when choosing a college and finding that right college fit and make sure those colleges and universities have those opportunities too. And I'll add to that. I know um, where I did my graduate program was Drake University in Des Moines, mm -hmm. Iowa. And you think of Des Moines and Iowa, I mean, we're very diverse, yeah. but it ended up being in a, it's in not a great area. And, you know, I drove in at night and I drove out, but if I were to live there and send my daughter there, and no offense to anyone that's interested in Drake, but I, I would have some concerns about the neighborhood sure. area that it was at. So I think one of the things with Lakeland and some of those areas is make sure, like you said, go around and see the community yep. around it and see, and I know Lakeland, I mean, obviously it's, it's a beautiful, yep. I love that city and I love like the, the square and you have the farmer's market and the lake and, you know, and it just feels the community really rallies around the college. And so that's a yep. good thing to understand. Um, I had another student who wanted to go out, well, it happened to be Iowa, Grinnell, and it was just <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. And she's like, how am I gonna go anywhere, you know? And so finding, do you feel comfortable going on and off campus? Yep. Is really important. So I, I'm gonna add to that. So make sure parents, um, <laughs> and ask about the safety as well. I'm, yes. I would add that because making sure that your students stay on campus and off campus is very important. Absolutely. Um, and one thing that I didn't mention that I wanted to kind of touch on when we get into athletics a little bit is school spirit. I think sometimes there is a misconception that if it's a smaller school that does not have like the big, huge football teams, that it doesn't have that school spirit that's there. I think that couldn't be further from the case. I, I actually went to a Division One NCAA school myself from my alma mater, Niagara University, up in upstate New York. We had Division One basketball and then Division One hockey, and those were the big programs in our campus. Our students would go out and fill the arenas. It was loud. It was packed. We had great teams that were there. So you didn't have to have specifically huge school to have that great atmosphere. And I think this is when you, if you look at athletics, as part of your college admissions process and as part of your college search, um, I kind of separate the two as far as admissions and athletics. And here's why most schools, if you're looking at a division one, which is your big, huge universities, your UF, your USF, UCF, FSU, Ohio State, Auburn, they're recruiting their students far ahead of time. And they have their own recruits that they're looking at for all their sports for division one that's there. Florida Southern is a Division II school for NCAA programs, so it's a blend of academics and athletics that we're looking at. We may have some scholarships available. Recruitment is still predominantly done by our coaches, um, and they go out and they're scouring the globe for some of the top athletes, whether it be swimming, tennis, lacrosse that's pictured here. There's a lot of opportunities, and I think a lot of times we hear students, I'm very interested in athletics. We have to kind of explain even Florida Southern is very sim more so similar in your D2 schools are more so similar to what you're gonna see in the D1 recruitment process. Where that would be different uh, is if they're looking at a division three, an NAIA school, maybe you're looking to play at the junior college level that's there. Some of that recruitment, you have the opportunity to work with your admissions team members, get connected with coaches, have those opportunities. So understand the different levels that are there in athletics, the requirements for that, the availability of the programs. Uh, this is just, Overall, at any school, you're going to have a lot more availability for spots on a lacrosse program that keeps, say, 30 or 40 students compared to a men's or ladies basketball program that has 
eight to 12 students that are there, maybe recruiting one or two students a year. So just knowing the size of the teams, what the scholarship opportunities may be for athletics, and working with directly the, uh, the uh, athletic departments at the different colleges and universities if you're a recruited athlete and something to consider. Well, and like one of our students uh, that you have is RJ. Yep. And loved baseball, had played, you know, high school baseball, but really maybe wasn't at the, the D1, D2 level. He sure. ended up being, um, he was an assistant on the team. And then you it your, your JV team the next year. Yep. Loved and it. You know, I had a great time. Being a team manager, that, that's also part of that, too, is having the opportunities not necessarily to be a student athlete, but to be involved in athletics, cheerleading, having the opportunity to be a team manager, maybe getting the opportunity to do promotions and work with the teams on campus as part of that part-time job. Um, I think that's some of the things that are very vibrant here. On Fridays, we were red on this campus. Uh, we do red outs in our arena on campus when we play our biggest rivals. I know our rivals do the same things when we go against us here. So. That's some of the fun of the college environment. And sure, if you're looking for the six Saturdays to go to football games, and that is the number one most important thing to you in your college search, that should be up at that top list. Know that ahead of time that that is something you absolutely have to have on that college campus that's there. Make that something that's an interest to you. If it's more about that school spirit experience, being part of sports because you've seen that in high school, don't leave out some of the smaller schools or even the schools that are smaller public universities that aren't as well known for their programs, aren't on national TV on Saturdays each and every year uh, that's there, or maybe ones that aren't in the spring in the NCAA tournament that you see for basketball. So all some great opportunities to consider because athletics really adds to the school spirit uh, in the actual school culture as well. I touched on location and I think what's great, I, I wanted to mention, and Amanda, you brought up a great point about going out to Iowa and being at Grinnell and different things, how do you get there? One thing that gets forgotten oftentimes in the college search process is not just, okay, where do I go? How far is this? But also how do I get there? Um, <laughs> when we go over financial aid information, a lot of times with families, one of the biggest shockers, especially if they're coming from outside the state of Florida, is we give an average from the federal government what it costs to travel back and forth during breaks for that. Sure. That's an added yeah. expense that's often forgotten. That's there. You want to go home, see your family after the fall semester is done, be there for Christmas, be there for Thanksgiving. That costs money to go back and forth. Um, the other thing, too, is how close are you to the metropolitan airports that are there? Um, good example of that. Family coming from Delaware, there is no airport in Delaware. There is no actual international airport in Delaware. You have to drive two and a half, three hours to go to Washington or Baltimore. That's going to cost a lot more than, say, a family that's coming from Atlanta, or maybe they're flying out of Southwest Florida and going to a location that's a hub for them. So it's something to consider. We have a lot of families that consider Florida Southern because we're an hour away from the Orlando International Airport and 30 minutes from Tampa International Airport. We're in a perfect location for transportation. For Southwest Florida in that area, depending upon which way you come, we're two hours. It's basically that distance of far enough away from home to get a real college experience, but not too far away from home. If you wanted to come home, you could do so. So what is that for you? How far is too far? How close is too close? Uh, what works best? And when you think about location, the availability major plays into this too, because what are the job opportunities after graduation if you wanted to stay in that area? Um, that's a big factor that we talk about now. If students are interested in business, education, nursing, computer science, and those areas, Central Florida is a hub. Any school in the I-4 corridor, and we often see this when families visit us on campus, they're not just visiting Florida Southern, and within a week's time, let's say they're down here for Disney vacation and college search at the same point, they're going to go to UCF, USF, uh, Florida Institute of Technology, University of Tampa, Rollins, Stetson, Eckerd. They're looking at different sizes, different types of schools, similar programs, but in the same location because they know after graduation, maybe this is where they want to land and have a job. And maybe the cost of living is a little bit lower in one area compared to the other. Already things to consider even as you're going throughout your college search camp uh, process. And then thinking about location, the actual campus itself and where it's located can play a big role in the safety as well. And that was a great point, Amanda. 
Um, Yale University, unbelievable school. Everybody knows Yale. Everybody knows Penn. There's sometimes in some of the poor, not the greatest neighborhoods uh, that they're in that have higher crime rates surrounding the campus that's there. Not always the case, but what you can take a look at in a great resource for families is something called the College Navigator. This is actually the national education statistics information, and it shares everything from average profile for a student and then the area that it's within and specifically the crime statistics surrounding the campus and on the campus itself. So as that becomes a bigger factor of safety, uh, taking a look at that in the consideration process, especially as you're looking at campuses and you want to compare them, that's a great way to do so. So I've gone over a lot of different pieces in the college search process. And if you are going through the college search process, oftentimes students are getting tons of email, mail, things are starting to look the same. Um, we know this happens and it's tough to tell schools apart. Um, and I always encourage any family that I'm talking with and going through the college search process with and advising them about applications and financial aid and those types of things, majors and giving information about that, Find the little nuances that set schools apart, make them different. Um, here at Florida Southern, we have three guarantees. We guarantee an internship. Every major has that opportunity. Every student has that opportunity here. We guarantee a study abroad. We call it a junior journey. Most of our trips are covered by the cost of the college tuition as well. So you have to earn credit and apply that up towards their major or, or towards gen eds. And we guarantee graduation in four years time. If a student does what they need to do, are successful in the classroom, meet their GPAs, we guarantee that graduation in four years time, if something happens, we'll actually cover the cost of the college tuition after the fourth year. Um, every school has things that are different about them. That's what's unique about us. For the schools that students consider in their college search, there's always this little 5%, I always like to say. So is it a major? Is it the culture? Uh, I, I mentioned Lynn University, previous in the aviation program. They have a huge international student population at Lynn University. That's one of the things they're well known for. They're proud of that on their campus. Uh, the other thing I, I like to say, like UCF, if you drive down I-4, all their billboards say big. They are very proud of being big. You can see that in what's there. That's really what's unique about them. They're proud of that, that they like being that big school, having the big school feel and the opportunities for the students. So every school has these little nuances that set them apart and make them unique, regardless of the schools that you have and the schools that you're looking at, the best way to figure out what's different about these schools and to make sure that they're the right fit for you is to go on the actual campuses and visit. So often in working with families, a lot of times they will contact me and say, I'm interested in Florida Southern. I, I wanna learn a little bit more about how to apply, about financial aid and those types of things. Start the process by visiting. See if you actually like the campus itself to start. No one is asking you to apply to a college or university before you actually visit them. And I know sometimes students will apply, wait for their decisions to come back, and then go visit campuses. And if it happens that way and you go and visit the campuses and they're not the right fit for you, you're starting the process all over in the applications and trying to find the fit. Do the reverse. Go visit campuses, find out what makes them unique. What are the students actually like on that campus? Visit the schools when students are there on the campus. Things are vibrant, things are going on. And while some schools have open houses and those types of pro big programs that they offer, go and actually visit the campus for just an individual tour. Go and actually just walk into the admissions office, walk into an academic building, see what happens. Look lost on a college campus. That's a <laughs> great way to figure out what the campus is all about. I think one of the things I'm most proud of here, I always say that our students are welcoming, they smile, they wave, they hold doors. They're part of the culture of Florida Southern and our students are they're really good natured individuals. They like being helpful. So if you walk around here, you're probably gonna have somebody say, are you lost? Do you need help? Can we get you somewhere? And go on a campus and see if somebody does that. If it's like, you wanna go and have that experience, it's like, I can get around and really kind of do my thing. See if it's like that. Think about what type of learner you are and go and actually take a class on that campus before you actually attend the school. If they allow you to do so, we do that here. We actually encourage students to come on campus, actually stay overnight on campus in our residence halls, we call it Scholars Weekend for our admitted students, take classes in their academic areas of interest, talk with professors, students in their major, see if this is what they really like. 
how do you know if you're really going to see yourself at that school unless you have that full experience of seeing a residence hall, seeing a classroom, talking with professors in the classrooms there, seeing what it's like. Also, what is the return on investment like? What are students that have been graduating, what are they doing now? Where are they going? What jobs do they have? Look at recent graduates over the last three to five years. You could probably span that out over 10 years or so if you wanted. And most schools have that information. What are their recent college graduates doing? Whether it be their alumni offices or maybe it's their admissions offices. So the biggest pro tip I can give for anyone, and I started this and kind of going through and narrowing down your college search, is make a list. Um, I had one of the moms of one of my students that I got a chance to work with. I said, what worked best for you? And a little bit of the story about her. Um, she actually is the daughter of parents who are both professors and deans at Florida State University. Uh, she started her college search with 35 schools, applied to 27, auditioned at 14, and then ultimately chose Florida Southern College at the end. And I was fascinated by how large that group of schools was to start. She's a theater major. So I asked and said, what did you do? And they said, we created a list. And we started with a spreadsheet of all the factors that we wanted the school to have and started to check things off. No student I have ever talked to or family I've ever talked to have ever checked anything off as far as the school or checked the school off by looking at marketing material and things you get in the mail or by email. You do start checking schools off your list by going to visit them and seeing if you actually can see yourself on that campus. Um, I mentioned our Scholars Weekend, where students come on campus to visit us. I know the University of Florida does their outstanding high school scholars program each year that they have done. Uh, I know that students have had the opportunity to do group tours that I've seen on campus or go with their high schools and visit campuses as well. So getting those opportunities to see what it's like, get a real feel at campus is gonna allow you to narrow down that selection list in the schools that you're looking at. Some other things that are additional factors that I didn't want to leave out and really wanted to recognize as part of the college search. Number one is all my friends are going there. I hear this a lot. Um, in college admissions, just to kind of give you a little bit of insight, we call this the flock mentality. Where <laughs> everybody's going and you all have to go together. Uh, that's there at the same time. If you are a person that wants to be different, you can be different. If you want to pick a school that's not the same as everybody else, it's okay. If you really want to follow that group of friends all together, that's okay too. Um, I oftentimes share a lot of the stories from my wife uh, in her college search process. A lot of her and her friends all went to UCF all together. They went to the high school that was close to there. They decided that's where they wanted to go. They wanted to stay local. So they all decided to go there together, all different majors, but that's what worked for them. That was important for their friend group at that point in time in high school, stayed together. And one thing that happened for her, and also probably happens for a lot of students, you will go all together thinking we're gonna be together for the next four years in college. And then college happens, you meet roommates, you meet new people, you're going to make friends in college. In new places, you're always gonna meet new people. And I think that's the scary thing of you want to go together as a group because you're familiar with that group. You're going to definitely meet new people just in a classroom and then in the housing experience that you have, maybe in a dining hall. I know there's several schools, what they do, they have eat-in programs where they have students that are there. They'll actually get you connected by eating with them in their dining halls and, and, re and the different options on campus too. A big factor that we see a lot here at Florida Southern, and I saw a ton at the University of Florida, is my family attended there and I'm a legacy. And this is a tough one sometimes to break the mold. Um, I always give an example. We have a young man who's a graduate. If he's listening today, hi, Wes Davis, uh, out there of Florida Southern College. Had seven members of his family all attended at the University of Florida. Um, and he ultimately chose to come to Florida Southern College because he wanted a smaller school experience, wanted the opportunity. He actually ended up doing 14 internships. By the time he graduated, he was a political science major. Uh, is working for Equality Florida now and doing some unbelievable and amazing things after graduating from Florida Southern that he knew he wanted that small school experience and wanted to be that big fish in small pond to have. Maybe it's the opportunity to go to those football games at FSU or UF or UCF together, be in the crowd with your family, and that's important. That's a big factor. If you really want to go, it may have a great experience, maybe it's a sibling 
that had an amazing experience in another school and you're following them as well, that's a big factor that you should consider that's there in the process too. Breaking that tradition is something you may want to consider as well. What is the right fit for you? Maybe just because your sibling or parent or aunt or uncle or grandmother, or grandfather went to that school, it's different for you. And you can start a new trend and maybe you and then other individuals will go to that new school too. And so I do think though, legacy, a lot of people think legacy does help um, right. some of the admissions process, but unless you're really donating a lot of money, it really doesn't play a whole lot into the admissions, especially at some of those big schools, unless, you know, you've got deep in your pocket. <laughs> Absolutely. So I, I, I always like to say, and I, as far as a student that's looking at as a legacy that's there, if you, and this was uh, stated beautifully last week in the webinar from Scott Daigle, maybe mm -hmm. you have multiple family members that attended that school that's there and think about it this way if a school like uf has 55,000 applicants and all they have a huge number of students maybe about say 15 20,000 of them are legacies themselves because they've yeah. had students that have applied and family members that have gone for a long period of time and we see that as well here at florida southern while it is not a huge factor at a larger school it could be a big factor at a smaller school on that side. So we certainly look and see is a student, a legacy student here at Florida Southern. And some schools will consider that in the admissions process. Some schools not so much in the admissions process that's there. Um, location, location, location. I touched on this point. And I think what's important to mention here when talking about the additional factors is, is the school in the area that you want to go as far as it is a urban area, you want to live in a city a big city, um, give a great example of this. We oftentimes will have students, as I mentioned, maybe in the same day that we'll visit Florida Southern College and the University of Tampa. Both are private schools here in the state of Florida, similar sometimes in academic programs, but completely different as far as the setting themselves. We're a suburban campus right on a lake. They are in the heart of downtown Tampa. That's there. I mean, you could not get any closer to actual Tampa itself and the waterfront that's there. So what are you looking for for a student? Is that what you're excited about? Is being in that big, huge city environment? Maybe you're really interested in being in a small mountain area. Um, I did my graduate work at St. Bonaventure University that's in Olean, New York. You probably have never heard of that in your life as a little teeny tiny town. It was in the Allegheny Mountains, only had about 14,000 residents. We had about nine restaurants. It was small. I mean, it was very, very small, a tight knit community that was there. And the community really worked with the college because the college really was the economy for that town that was there. So think about that. Are you looking for that type of setting that you really want to get away, be a little bit more rural? Do you want urban? Do you want suburban? What works for you for location where the school is? Three big ones that I really wanted to finish up with tonight. Will my credits transfer? I think this is becoming a bigger topic overall for families in the college search process, and it should. I think there are a lot of schools out there that are having conversations about AP, IB, dual enrollment, ACE, and how that impacts the academics at the school. And are they going to accept credits? Here, I already mentioned, we accept up to 93 transferable college credits between AP, IB, dual enrollment, ACE credits. We love the college credits. It shows that students are well-prepared. They're academically challenging themselves in high school. We know that sometimes those are the best students on campus here in the classroom as well, because they have things to add from their experiences, what they brought from those college classes they took. Schools say like the University of Chicago or Harvard or Yale, they're not taking those college credits that's there. Maybe it helped you as far as boosting up your GPA and the admissions process but they want your classes to be taken on those college campuses that's there. We and I will say, I did, sorry to interview, but I put the yeah. YouTube link on from our last webinar we did in the Christmas time, and it was how yeah. do your acceleration credits transfer? Yeah. So go there, and we clearly <laughs> went, we went through it all once before, didn't we? Yes, we did, absolutely. So, and that's that should be an important factor for a student. Mm -hmm. How are those credits yeah, going to transfer? Absolutely. And, and it's not even, are they going to transfer? What's required for them to transfer? What score on an exam? What grade on a, on a, a class that you took? And how? Are they going to be electives? Are they going to be Absolutely. core? Is it going towards my major? Yes. Mm -hmm. Cost. 
Um, and I, I say that one word and I started the presentation and we do this here at Florida Southern as well. Oftentimes we'll start our presentations here in the state of Florida by saying we're private, but we accept bright futures, Florida prepaid and Florida aid. Because sometimes you'll see a sticker price for a school that's there and you write them off instantaneously. In reality, private schools have more money to give to students. They have great endowments that's there. They have opportunities for scholarships for students to apply to. They'll accept different types of aid that's there. So while you see a bigger sticker price comparatively at a private school or maybe an out-of-state institution, they may have more money to give to those students like we do here. I know my alma mater is that way as well. I was able to get a lot of scholarship aid to go to college, and I chose the private school over the public school in New York State because it was cheaper for me to attend the private school instead of the public university because they were giving more, me more money based on my academics and what I had done in the classroom. They valued that, and it wasn't just a, here's your set tuition, here's what you're getting, and here's what your bill is. So sometimes some things to think about, big factor for most families we are here to be a resource, and I stress that for myself. I spend time with families as a resource, literally going over financial aid award letters line by line by line in the springtime. Not just the Florida Southern one, but award letters from other schools. I may have five award letters from five different schools. All of them look very different. And at the end, when I go over the award letters, the one that looks the most expensive may actually be the least expensive, and the one that looked the cheapest may end up being the most expensive because the award letters are set up differently. They're made differently. They put different types of aid in things. Are they one-year scholarships? Are they two-year scholarships? Are they four-year scholarships? All things to think about and questions to ask. And asking a lot of questions, going into that as well, many families now, one of the biggest things that we're hearing is, what is available for a student if they have an IEP, a 504 plan, they have different learning difficulties that they need accommodations on the college campus. What's available for student disability services? Is there a contact person? We have one singular person on campus that's a contact for our families that has questions, works with the students in accommodations in the classroom as well. Uh, one thing I didn't add on to here that's part of this conversation as well what are the policies for service animals or therapy animals or emotional support animals on the campus as well? What do you need for documentation for that? As these types of things start to come up, ask the colleges what their policies are there. Um, something I didn't add in here is an additional factor. How attached are you to that pet, to that cat, that dog? Does the college allow that? Can you bring that there with them? Um, we don't allow anything but our service animals here on campus at Florida Southern, but say an Eckerd College, they have pet residential halls. They do pet graduation at College, Eckerd College. Yeah. So, <laughs> so if that's important to you, mark that down as a factor in finding the right college fit for you in your college search. I want to finish with a little bit of an anecdote and an example. Uh, and you're probably looking at the presentation saying, why is there a whole bunch of Chick-fil-A sauces and packets that are here? And I put in here the Florida Southern College difference, but this is really in, a good example of going through the college search process. Every school is its own sauce. And Chick-fil-A, if you like Chick-fil-A and you go to Chick-fil-A, they ask you what sauces would you like that's there. And they actually did a national survey at Chick-fil-A of the different types of sauces. The number one most popular sauce is ketchup. That's the one that most people pick as far as what they would like. And I kind of equate this to the college search a lot of times and the different sauces that Chick-fil-A offers. So ketchup is comfortable. It's familiar. You know it. It's kind of like here in the state of Florida, your UF, your FSU, your UCF. They're very well-known names. You can see them on Saturdays. You're familiar with that. Um, and you're saying, okay, I've seen that for a long time. I'm familiar with that. I can go with that. Sometimes you have options that were kind of the second, third, fourth choices like barbecue, honey mustard, ranch. You're familiar with those as well. It's not too wild. It's not kind of going too far away from the ketchup. It's kind of your preference. And I would almost kind of consider those like the smaller schools here in the state that you're familiar with. Maybe say like a UNF, FGCU in the Southwest Florida area, uh, even the University of Miami, that would be another one that's a big name that's known, but not as big as say the bigger, huge, big schools in state, out of state. 
Maybe you want to get really wild. You're going to go for spicy sriracha. Maybe you're going to go for buffalo sauce that's there. I sometimes equate that to like going out of state that's there or going to somewhere that's very unique, like a new college here in the state of Florida, not as well known, but very specific type of student that fits very well there. Or you're gonna go say to Hawaii Pacific University and have the opportunity to study marine biology and that's your dream. Oftentimes the least selected sauce at Chick-fil-A, I think is the one that they're most well known for when you think of Chick-fil-A and you've been there for a while, is Chick-fil-A sauce. Chick-fil-A sauce is a blend of different spices from all the sauces that we mentioned there. It has a unique taste to it. And I sometimes think about a smaller school like a Florida Southern or some schools that you probably have looked at, like a Emory University or an Elon. They have the feel of a big, huge school. So they have like the school spirit. They have the opportunities for athletics. They have great academic programs, good reputations. They also have something that's special about them in smaller class sizes. So they're kind of the blend of everything that you're familiar with and a couple of the other things that are kind of different. And when you're going through your college search process, pick the sauce that works for you because your sauce can be different than everyone else's when you go to Chick-fil-A. Why should it be any different when you're going through your college search process? If you like Polynesian, pick Polynesian. If you like honey mustard, pick honey mustard. If you like Chick-fil-A sauce, pick Chick-fil-A sauce. You don't have to just go with ketchup every time that you're out there. So it's kind of an anecdote I like to share and kind of wrapping up about the college search process. Big ones that I cannot stress enough. I always think about picking a school as a three-step process. Prioritize, think about what's most important to you, go out and visit your schools, and then decide. And decide is twofold. Apply, get admitted, decide if that's the right fit for you ultimately or where you want to attend. So there are tons of resources that are out there to help. That's my job. I, I really love getting the opportunity to work with families. And not every student's going to choose to come to Florida Southern College. I've had conversations where I know that ultimately is probably not the right fit, or I know it really is the right fit for the student and have to kind of go through that process with them and helping them decide if this is the right fit ultimately. So my goal is to try and find that fit. And for any family, uh, for parents, siblings, grandparents that are working with a student, focus first on finding the right fit for your student that's there. Because one way or the other, if you, as a parent, I hear this oftentimes uh, in working with families, if you try and push them into the school, then they probably won't want to go there sometimes. If you push them away from that school, maybe they ultimately end up there, but work together. It's a cohesive decision, a co-binding decision. You're working together to find that ultimate right fit of what's great for that student where they could ultimately do some amazing things. I gave that story of Wes Davis here. While his family certainly was a little bit disappointed he didn't choose their alma mater, they're really proud of all the stuff that he had the opportunity to do here and how that worked out for him. So I, I put my contact information up here tonight as well. That concludes my portion of the presentation here, but I uh, certainly would love to share or talk about any other additional topics in the college search process that I can. Hey, if anybody has any questions, and I do want to show real quick, I'll go to um, the Unmazed website, which um, I wanted to show here, right down below, uh, the second one is the webinar with mm -hmm. Joseph Madigan from uh, last year. If you click on that, that talks all about those acceleration credits that we were talking about earlier. And then the other one I think would be really interesting that came from the last article in the magazine is I created a college visit checklist. So it's a downloadable, yes. you can go in, and what I really like is that you can actually rank, um, when, you, when you're on campus, actually fill this out and ask some of these harder questions. You know, yep. um, one of the questions, how many times do students typically spend on homework? Because what happens, like yep. you were saying, if you're going to all these schools and doing all this, it, it kind of blurs together at the end, yes. and all of a sudden you're like, what did Florida Southern have versus University of Tampa and where were we? And and Joe, you can attest to this, it's never too early to start. Even if no. you're taking a visit up to Orlando, swing by the campus, even if you have an eighth grader or a ninth grader and just check it out. You know, if you're going on vacation up to Georgia yep. in the mountains, 
just swing by a college campus. It's nice to stretch your legs, maybe get some Chick-fil-A. I'm kind of hungry nope. for Chick-fil-A now. <laughs> my, um, my, my niece is a sophomore in high school yeah. and got a chance to visit with family back up in Buffalo. It's talking to my sister because she's starting to get into that college search process. She said, oh, when should we start visiting campuses? And they had just planned a trip to go to South Carolina. I said, go visit now when she's going in from her, her sophomore to her junior year. And she said, isn't that too early? I said, no, this is actually the perfect time to start. It's between that sophomore into the junior year. Start going to visit school, see what you like, see what you're really not interested in, see what's going to be the right fit. Because you can go, you can visit a ton of different schools and really kind of figure out, okay, well, I really liked being here. I like the students here. I like the feel here. I like the things that were here. And then you can work through the next steps in the process, like applying financial aid, figuring out credits and those types of things. So starting early, freshmen and sophomores coming on campus is great. We love seeing them here at Florida Southern. I know many schools enjoy seeing students earlier and earlier in the process uh, because we are starting our application processes earlier and earlier. Uh, we opened our application for admission on May 15th. We sent out our first admission decisions in early June for next fall. So it's not too early or too late for students to do those types of things and apply now over the summer. But starting earlier, because UNF is doing that, many other schools are opening their applications earlier. There's many different ways to apply now, the coalition application, common application, online applications for schools. So starting earlier really gives you the opportunity to do a lot of good research on your, your college search. Absolutely. And I think that's such an important thing. And I know you guys have um, the overnight that you do up yep. there, which is very unique. Um, and so I think just getting the, the student acclimated and like you said, going to a class if you possibly can, those yep. are just so important. So um, and also you guys um, host a lot of different activities for high schools up on your campus. And yep. so, um, those are always great times if your kids in. Um, yeah you know, all the different national, um, what am I thinking of the, I can't think of it off the top of my head, but some of the science competitions and things yes. like that. Mm -hmm. um, yep. to do. So, um, no, I think it was. To give you one example that we host a, a seminar for tomorrow leaders right here on the campus each summer for students in the Southwest Florida area from the different rotaries uh, in the area that come up on campus. And that's from central and Southwest Florida that's here. So great event that we do. Uh, if it, you're an athletic recruit or interested in athletics, go and visit for camps on any campus that you're interested in. Um, we're getting that back more and more and more from our NCAA Division II coaches and hearing that from other programs. They're going to show more interest in students that are interested in them. So yeah. as one quick tip, if you have a student athlete that's looking at athletics, go and do a camp on the college campus. That's a great way to not only get seen and have the opportunity to talk with coaches, but they're going to give you tips a lot of times as far as how to get recruited, how to go through that process. They're going to help you, even if it's not for that school necessarily, that can set you up for success to be recruited as an athlete. And I know, I mean, you're the admission representative for my area, Southwest sure. Florida. And, you know, I think you're such, and any admission representative is such a wealth of information. Yes. And so families getting to know you and asking these right questions, you're really their point of contact. Yes. Um, for these types of schools. So um, making sure, I know you have some college fairs that'll be coming down. You'll be for the Lee yep. County Fair and yep. uh, you come to high schools as well. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, I'll yeah. be back down there in October. They have the big college night that will be at uh, the Suncoast Arena on the Southwest Florida, uh, I'm sorry, Florida Southwestern State campus that'll be there. So I believe that's October the 3rd is the fair. No, we didn't have it last year, that big, you know, hurricane. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no hurricane this year. So, uh, we also, one thing that's unique about us, and I know some other schools host regional receptions, great opportunities in the local area. We do that each and every year in Bonita Springs. So a nice opportunity for students and families in the area considering Florida Southern or if you're looking at other schools and you do, do, do these events, like Destination Gainesville was one that the University of Florida did. Not to keep saying things that UF does compared to Florida Southern are very similar. Uh, just my experiences and what I've seen, they host regional receptions in the area where you can meet students from the school, faculty, admissions representatives. So a great way, again, to build some relationships with the campus communities that are there. And that's part of kind of that demonstrated interest, too. So Absolutely. definitely when you know... Uh, a student, they're getting on campus, they're asking the right questions. 
it definitely kind of helps you build that relationship with them. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, there's nothing like getting to know the students from your area or individuals yeah. that are representing your area from those college campuses. Because you never know if your application is the one that's being presented by that person to the admissions committee on the campus. Mm -hmm. I know for my students from Southwest Florida, I get the opportunity to actually share the application with our admissions committee for every student that I work with. Uh, so that's something I get to share any of the little conversations and things that we've talked about something unique because if they're a great fit for our campus, I want to go to bat for that student. So I know on many campuses, you have admissions committees that are reviewing different things. Sometimes demonstrated interest can certainly hold some weight. Not every campus. Um, I know that's not necessarily the case for say your bigger, huge schools that have tons and thousands of applicants, but a smaller school that's looking for something unique to bring to their campus. If you build that relationship with that admissions counselor, and you're an amazing flute or tuba player, and you're looking at music at that school, maybe that's something that opens the door and the opportunity for you there comparative to another student that is really applying for a very, very overfilled major on the campus. So FSU has very unique, and so does Florida Southern unique music, fine arts, theater programs. They look at talent, not just the academics that's there too. So if you have those types of things to offer, make sure that you're working with the individuals on the campus so you can bring that forward and let them know that too. Absolutely. And I think that's where sometimes people don't think about those things. There's additional yeah. scholarships that might be available. Absolutely. You know, they're thinking I'm going to be a business major, but you're right. They could be a flute player and yep. you need that in, in your orchestras or whatever. So. And I didn't even mention that as part of the presentation. I talked about academic majors. Um, yeah, are theater and music. Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Um, you can do the same thing with dance or art or um, I always mention our horticulture and citrus program. We're the only citrus program in America. So if you're really and interested. Isn't it like the highest paid when you get out of college, your program? I mean, let's. Yeah. <laughs> but isn't it like the highest paid bachelor's degree first year it's of college is your citrus? One of the so highest starting salaries for student you know, horticulture and citrus here because it's a need. It's a high need. You could you could put that in the same category as a computer science degree in cybersecurity, engineers, nurses, educators. Uh, there's such a need in those areas. And for a school like us, we're trying to fill those needs. And many colleges and universities are trying to do the same thing. So again, if you have something unique to offer and you're going into an area where there is a lot of opportunity for jobs and growth after graduation and not a whole lot of students to fill that. A perfect example of that, and one you might not think of, is we have a dynamic sports business management program here. And I really was careful to say sports business management, not just sports management, because students can actually do finance and business as part of this. We have more internships than we have students to fill them with each and every year. So, I mean, we're a hub for professional sports and, and, and amateur sports as well, with Disney being right down the road, having the opportunity to work with the Tampa Bay Bucks, the Lightning. There's a lot of schools in our area similar in the same situation as well. It's We don't have enough students for those types of programs, so the amount of jobs and internships that are there, too. So that's something that I talked about location um, and the availability of those opportunities. A great question to ask on any campus if I'm going to this school and I'm interested in becoming a doctor or a lawyer, what is that going to look like for me at the undergraduate level? Uh, we actually require students to actually do volunteering observation, have a level one trauma medical center that's right down the road from Florida Southern College, it's the busiest ER in the United States. We just found that out. Uh, well, Lake 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 medical center here. I mean, <laughs> that's something unique. They're looking for students that can help out in those types of areas. Whereas, again, not, not to say the University of Florida too much, but they have Shands Medical Center and UF Help right on the campus. Many of their own students are already getting those opportunities kind of filtered into that. So it's difficult for an undergraduate student to have those opportunities as much as the grad student would. Not that they couldn't and wouldn't have that opportunity, but it's just because of the actual location being directly on the campus there, you're going to have a lot of those opportunities at the graduate level rather than undergraduate in the location. So two factors to kind of put together in the college search. Absolutely. And there's all these things. And, you know, and then we also talk about, like you said, getting a career and retention. And yep. you're just talking about how many students come to you 
and stay. And I think that's yes. a big thing that a lot of parents don't realize. These schools might have really big numbers, but how many students are they actually retaining after their Absolutely. first year? You know, they realize that this wasn't my fit and I wasn't, I didn't want to go to school. And some are pretty low. So those are good questions, even, even within certain programs. You know, are they just taking biology majors that half the kids drop? Same with engineering. Are they just dropping or are they actually exactly. staying and getting jobs? So, you know, those are good questions that I think often aren't asked. And mm -hmm. so when you start kind of digging down into it, it becomes very clear kind of who rises to the top absolutely and the student need so um you know I, I, we had everyone stay with us for the whole time which was fantastic. um and, uh, yeah and you guys did fantastic and so again mr madigan thank you so much for being with us today and thank you everybody that uh watched and this will be on youtube feel free to share and i'll put it up on the website as well so um, hope to talk to you soon and everyone take care thank you joe thanks so much have a great night you too bye